Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Crew First Culture Podcast. This is Jeremy again, and thank you for spending some time with me today. Very much appreciate it. My main goal is to try my best to add value in some way to your life. And I, I almost feel like that's kind of a conceited or, or ego-driven statement, but it, it's not. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying that I guarantee you I can add value to your life. I'm just saying that's the reason I do this. You know, I, I don't I don't do it so that I can hear myself talk. I don't do it so I can, you know, see my picture everywhere. I, I do it because I truly feel like I have been given a message that needs to be shared you know, through the, the life that I have lived through the circumstances that, that I've been through, through, you know, experiences at, you know, in the fire service, through leadership opportunities, whatever it is, you know, the, the life that I have, life I've lived, it has given me a message that I want very much to share with as many people as I can. And so I thank you for allowing me to, to try to accomplish that today. So to, today I am basically going to be kind of just digging into a post that I just put out just a few minutes ago. Just it's <laughs> I laugh because I guess to, to start out, you know, I had this conversation with a couple of the guys at the firehouse last night here recently. I just feel, I feel different. I, I feel like there is something going on. And if, if anyone out there has kind of experienced this, I'll try to explain a little bit better, but if you've experienced this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But a few times in my life, I've really felt like there is something coming. There's something, you know, that I possibly need to prepare for or just something different is happening. And that's kind of where I, I feel like I am right now. I feel like I have been for a couple of weeks now, just really pulled in the, in all kinds of directions. I, honestly, you know, I have admitted several times and yeah, I joke about it some, but just seriously, the, the, the ADD type brain that I have makes it very hard to focus on anything specifically for any length of time. And so, you know, writing lengthy articles or, or even compiling book material or, or finishing a, a PowerPoint for a several hour class is very hard because while I'm working on these specific topics and, and discussions or whatever I'm addressing, I get two other thoughts that really pop into my head and they're not really related, but it's almost like I got to get them out. So then, you know, I carry a, a notebook around. It's just a, about the size of a, a normal book, just a journal, basically, that it used to be. I used to have a lot smaller one, but my dog decided to chew it up a couple of weeks ago. And so then I spent probably two weeks trying to get everything out of that one into this new one and and go from there but just I've, I've really been trying to focus on getting stuff out and this is something that I've had to do a couple times really it's been a long time since I've been in that that area you know over the past year and a half or two I've really struggled to get stuff out you know i've struggled to find things that that really struck me and, and all that and that's kind of why the the content slowed down 
you know, I'm not going to just push out stuff that I don't feel something about. And so that's, that's really where the, the, the gap in episodes of the podcast and gap in content, social media wise, it just, it, it wasn't there for a while. And now, you know, it's, it's just kind of pouring out and I'm trying to collect it in as many ways as I can to, to keep it from disappearing. But it, it just feels like there's something pulling me in a direction. And, and it is, it's exciting because I know that when these things happen, you know, it, it leads to something important. You know, whatever that is, I don't know. But I, I do know that right now there's a lot of things on my heart and kind of a lot of things that I am just kind of thinking through some things I'm struggling with. And so it's easy for me to sit down with you and, and throw some of these things out because that's kind of the, the point of it. And this is, that's kind of how I've responded to a few people here lately. You know, uh, I'll, I've put out several posts that are, you know, basically just thoughts. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is the right way or this is the only mindset that that works or that makes sense i'm just throwing out thoughts and just like i started out with it's it's to it's to add value to somebody's life whether that's because i say something that really speaks to them or because i say something that sparks a conversation because they don't really agree with it but but it sparks a conversation to dig in and, and learn more of how they think about it. So, you know, I've, I've responded to a couple of people by saying, I, you know, I totally respect you not agreeing with me. I don't, I'm not in this to, to be agreed upon everything I say. It's the conversation. It's, you know, the respectful going back and forth of, okay, this is kind of how I see it. Don't really agree with you on that, but, this is this is what I feel. Okay, uh, I, I kind of get that. This is this is why I don't feel that. You know, whatever it is, conversation, man, making the connections with people, learning from each other, helping each other to grow. If you if you don't agree with somebody, that does not mean that you, you will not learn something from them or in some way grow because of of that conversation so anyway this is again something that has really been kind of hitting me lately and and i've put out a few things kind of all in the the same realm of this but so the the picture that i put says each day we have to make a conscious decision whether or not we will perform at our best. So, and the first line of, of kind of the commentary or whatever you want to put on it that, that I had in that post is this, this post is probably going to be one of those that causes me to lose some friends. And honestly, I don't want to lose friends, but if, if, if this comment, if this idea, if this you know, outpouring of, of how I feel causes somebody to not want to be associated with me anymore, then I am totally fine with that because I am comfortable in where I sit on this topic. And, and we'll get into some more of that. But as I was kind of thinking through this you know, and trying to write up something that, that really verbalizes my, my feelings on it, it, it hits me in so many different ways. You know, it hits me in a way that it makes me sad. It hits me in a way that it makes me you know, almost angry. It hits me in a way that it really hits me and makes me feel embarrassed in certain ways. But you know, 
as I got into to what I wrote, and, and you can go look at the post and, and read it. I'm not going to sit here and, and go through the whole thing, but just kind of hitting on some some of my thoughts as I was writing it. But well, we like to have our certain things or certain people to blame things on. You know, it's it's the new, newer generations. It's the it's social media. It's we're having to lower our standards for HR. It's, you know, whatever it is there, we've always, we've always got somebody or something to blame. You, you don't have to look really hard to, to find somebody or something to blame. And that's, that's true with anything, right? Now, that's a conversation I've had with my kids maybe a thousand times, but sadly over and over again, I find out that it, it's not these things. It's it's not, you know, the the weak leadership or the or, or HR or social media or younger generations. It's it's us. We are the problem. You know, we are the ones that that are okay with minimum. You know, in here, I, I state that, you know, being at the, once you cross that line, you, you become minimum standard compliant. You're, you're one step away from being competent. You're, you're, you're just one step outside of that. That's, that's how good you are. There's so much more. And I saw a quote yesterday that if if you're in the middle, you're just as close to the bottom as you are at the top. And to me, minimum standards is even worse because you're in the middle, but that middle is a it's a it's a huge line. It is a huge difference from those that are below minimum company standards to those that are you know, far above it. So when you're barely over that line, you are barely competent in this job. But but we we accept that. We we fight against having fitness programs. And I'll, I'll be very, very honest right now. I haven't been able to work out in a long time. I'm not somebody that is just a diehard fitness person. So I don't have a lot to stand on, I guess is what I'm saying in that realm. But it's not due to, to me not finding it as a priority. It's due to some physical things I'm going through right now that is limited. That. But that's, that's who we are. We're, we're fighting against things that will help us, will, will keep us safe, will keep us healthier. We're fighting against that. We're, we're the people that, and, and this, is, this is probably the backbone of this whole thought for me, and, and one of the most infuriating things for me, that we are, are the ones that will fight to the death for the right to do nothing on weekends like it was some god-given right to use those days for whatever we want and and you you have you have no right to mess with my right to not do anything i've i've literally heard people say in no less words that you know that's something that that we fought for that's something that our union, you know, fought to to have put in place, and it's like, and that's okay, I guess. That we we make that okay. You know, we we may only work ten days a month. Three of those days are going to be weekends. So seven days a month, not including whatever you take off because of, you know vacations or sick leave or kids events or whatever 
Well, then you got competing interest with all the different areas of our job. There's no way you can stay competent in this job if, if that's the mindset of, of what's acceptable. So it is very frustrating to me. And, and again, you know, just like the fitness thing, I will, I'll throw this out there. I have been the person that has came into work that has ate breakfast and has went straight to bed until, you know, we either got a call or it was lunchtime. Got up, ate some lunch and most likely went and sat in the recliner for a couple more hours. I've, I've been that person. But you know, I, I didn't have anybody telling me how wrong it was. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see how wrong it was for that to be the norm. And I'm not excusing myself at all. The, the reason I say it like that is because we have to be that person. If, if there are people out there that, that are in that mindset, we've got to be that person that at least tries, at least tries to show them what we truly owe this job. It doesn't owe us anything. This is, this is not some type of, you know, hotel that we go to and, and expect our, our sheets to be nice and crisp and clean and, and fresh water to be in the fridge and, and, you know, whatever else we need. For, for that mindset to be okay, for us to truly be comfortable with the, those two areas that I brought up, the, the minimum standard is okay mindset and the, the weekends are untouchable mindset for us to, to be okay with that. It, it tells me something and it, it, and it, it is very clear to me that you don't fully recognize and understand the responsibility that you have accepted by being a part of the fire service, as well as, the level of commitment that is going to be required of you. Because if, if, if you understood that responsibility, if you truly grasp the weight of what we are responsible for, then, then those things would not even, they, they would not be acceptable. And it's embarrassing to me, like I said earlier, that, that that's who we are now. We, we have become that entitled people. I know, you know, one of the, the posts I put out a couple of days ago and something that led to some, some great conversation Within my crew, you know, we, I talked about reputation versus character, and it, it's funny because reputation is so fluid. Repu the, my reputation can vary tremendously depending on you know where you know me from, how well you know me, and and most importantly how your values and, and your priorities and your mindset lines up with mine. You know, if, if people hear about what we're trying to do at, at my firehouse, the, the culture we're trying to build and, and all that, and it's something that they like because they want to be better. They want to challenge themselves. They want to, to become part of that then they're gonna they're gonna have a a very positive outlook on my reputation they're, they're gonna be talking it up a lot more but if if you're a person that hears that same stuff 
and and you are one of the fighters of the the weekend weekends off mind mentality then i guarantee you your view of my reputation is going to be a much more negative view but nothing is different i'm the same the the information that those two people got is the same it's just the perspective of somebody from their own point of view what they value and so for me you know i i used to think reputation was a lot more important than i do now i think it still has some importance but honestly i don't care i don't care what my reputation is because how can i care about it if it's so different across the board you know 30% of the people that that have a repute or know a reputation of me may be negative 70% may be positive i don't know i'm just making this crap up so how how can i how can i even put anything into that i, I just don't care but getting back to that that main thought you know I just admitted that I was that person. I was the person that that probably would have had a terrible attitude if if somebody tried to start something training wise on a weekend. I was that person that was more than happy to be left alone unless it was something we had to get up and go on, like a call. So I, I get it. But again, we can't allow it. We can't. It's, it goes against everything that we signed up for. It goes against everything that, that we took an oath to do. You know, just as, as an example, and, and this, is, this is what makes me so irritated about this whole mentality. And before I start, I will say that, you know, we're not perfect as a crew. We're, we don't, there, there are days when training, physical training doesn't get done. We've got lots of errands to do. We've got station tours or going to schools or EMS classes, whatever it is. But I guarantee you, even if we don't do some type of physical hands-on training we're sitting at the table at some point having a conversation that we are either growing just as people growing as in learning some leadership stuff growing as in just closeness and relationships we're, we we're getting some good out of that day even on the days that from the outside may not look like we are doing anything positive. But but even on the days we do, I'm not asking for eight hours of training. Never. There's not been one day as a station officer I've ever required my crew to, to work for eight hours training to satisfy some, you know, some thing within me that that I feel like we have to to satisfy. Not even close. I, I couldn't maintain that. There's there's no way that I could maintain the drive to to stay in that you know, you know re requirement for very long. I, I would get burned out. Some days it's two hours. Some days it's one hour. Some days, like I said, that, that have a lot of other things going on. Some days we might just get 45 minutes of, of good training in. So that being said, going back to the weekends, you know, we've had weekends to where, and we've done it both ways. We've, we've went straight from checking, checking trucks to, to doing training, then back to breakfast. 
And we went from checking trucks to eating breakfast, then going to train. But, but either way, we're done by nine or 10 o'clock. And that's it. You still have several hours before lunch that you can do whatever. I mean, literally, we can go train, get some good quality training like we did yesterday. Got out and got a, a couple hours of really good training because I've got two very new firefighters. And yesterday specifically, I had a very new driver with me who all were more than happy, more than willing to go get some good out of the day. So we got several hours in the morning, got some calls too, but we ate breakfast before we left. Because of the calls, it stretched the, the morning out further than it, it would have. But still, we were back by lunchtime, and that was it. I didn't ask anything else out of them. I, I, I don't need to. All I ask is, is they give me some time in the morning to get better. Give me some energy. Give me you know, an open mind some work ethic to make us better. And then the rest of the day is yours. You know, if, if, if you want to rest some, because chances are we're going to be up at night running calls. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to find busy work for these people that do more before lunchtime than 90% of the other crews out there. All day. That's all I ask. And, and so why is that too much? Why is it too much to ask to give me an hour on a weekend to train? I, I don't understand. So anyway, I, <laughs> I will I'll leave it at that because obviously, you know, from this point, I'm just beating it to death. But but you get the point. You 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 understand where I'm coming from. You you either agree or you don't agree. If you if you don't agree, hopefully hopefully I said something that at least puts some question in your mind of why you don't agree. Hopefully that gives you something to think about. Maybe there's a, a a different way to to find some middle ground to to get some training in, but still have a lot of time for you know whatever you want to do. But again, and I'm sorry, I told you I was going to wrap it up, but I mean seriously, is is that is that what we have the right to be upset about that? You're not allowing me to do what I want to do on the weekends. I mean, I get to sleep and get paid. I get to play basketball and pickleball and cornhole and, and all that and get paid. I get to eat and get paid. I, I get to sit and watch sports and get paid. Yeah, I run calls when the calls come in. But for us to have the mindset that we have the right to, to whine and complain about spending some of our time while we're getting paid to, to do something that, that makes us better, makes us more competent, makes us a closer crew, enhances the culture. It, it's, it's crazy. It, it's, it, it's truly crazy. And again, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that we have that mentality that that's okay now. So like I said, I, I will leave it at that and, and I'm not going to jump on anything else, but you know, as I ended that article, uh, I say every day we have a choice. I, I didn't say every weekday we have a choice. Every day, we have a decision to make. Every day, we get to choose 
if we're going to do something positive with that day, if we are going to do something to take advantage of this great opportunity that we have been given. That is to be a part of this fire service, to, to serve others, to help others. So every day, it's not about what I want to do. We have to put weight into why we're here. Every day, we should want to try to perform at our best, should try to want to grow just a little bit. Because we are here to serve others. And there's no better way to do that than to be at the best. I'm trying to, to say this right. I don't think I said it right. The, the best possible way for us to serve our citizens is to be at the best and top of the abilities and, and competence levels that we can. And we can only do that by making consistent decisions to perform every day, to get better every day, to, to squeeze a little bit of good out of every day. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it so much. Sorry if I get too much on soapbox on some of this stuff. I just, I feel like we, we have a lot of room to get better and I want, I want us to get better so badly. So thank you. I hope I said something to add a little bit of value at the very least. I hope I said something that stirred some thoughts in you, started some conversations with you and others. And outside of that, I appreciate your time. I will be in Wisconsin next weekend with Sean Duffy. If, if you're anywhere around that area, Campbell Sport, I believe, is, is the town we'll be in. It's just north of Milwaukee. But anybody that is in reachable distance of that, I'd love to see you out and, and share with you not only the passion I have, but that will be the first time I've actually kind of got with Sean in a class and, and worked with him. So it'd be fun to, to play off each other. So come see me, come see us if you're up that way. And outside of that, please, if, if you do get anything out of this or any other content that, that I put out, please share and like, and, and subscribe, take the time to, to review. If you, if you will, I'm so appreciative of that. I, I, I just, I want to reach as many people as I can because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that need to hear it. So as I said in the past, if, if you do take the time to review the podcast, I will send you some stickers as a thank you for that. Just let me know through direct message that you did and, and I'll get some coming your way. So thank you for your time until next time, stay humble and do work.